Well, you're not going to change someone's mind on something if you're yelling, bitching, and cussing. Paul here today with Lyle Stokes and Brian Lanham. And uh, I was one of those guys uh, you might have seen with a lot of fish and, uh, and a big one. <laughs> you know, I didn't mind showing off, uh, showing off my fish and even, even eating them. And uh, that was until I was on a forum and someone was talking about CPR, catch photo release, and I said catch photo refrigerate. And uh, some of the catfishing community really came unglued on me. And, uh, you know, first I resisted, and uh, <coughs> everything they said come down with with an exception of, of uh, Lyle and, and Dave, Lyle Stokes and Dave Ashby, and... Uh, they never came down on me, talked to me like I was a human with respect. And from that point on, things uh, things were explained to me, opened my eyes what conservation of these giant catfish were all about. And uh, Lyle, when when uh, we got to talking, what, what did you, uh, I mean... How did you, how did you think he was going to approach me and, and uh, try to help me out there a little bit. Well, um, it's the same with everybody. You just got to do the best you can and hope you get through to somebody once in a while. And, and, um, and most of the group, on, especially on Twisted Cat Outdoors, very conservation-minded. Uh, it's not that people don't keep fish to eat, but they release the big ones and, and uh, the breeding size fish. That way they can reproduce and keep fish in. And and uh, the way I look at it is if you can convince one out of every hundred or so that, that are, are taking all the fish they catch out to turn back the breeding size and the trophy size fish, then we can pass these on to uh, for, for the kids and grandkids and their grandkids so, you know, they'll know what big fish are like back in the 1800s, uh, especially in Missouri, on the Missouri River, the Osage River. Uh, they was catching 200 plus pound catfish. Uh, there hasn't been anything like that in several years. So every time that I get a chance to visit with somebody about uh, turning back some of the bigger fish, I do. And and uh, you know, Dave and I had talked about you, and we both you know thought that if we could get you to understand our side of things, that it would be time well spent. And as it turned out, it was time well spent. Well, you know, I'm I'm pretty hard headed anyway, and you approach approach me um, with a crappy attitude, you're not you're not going to get very far. I think uh, that's where you and I and, and Dave started talking quite a bit. Matter of fact, um, Brian Lanham's in here too, and and I've discussed with him uh, different things, and and uh, I think it's it's how you approach them and talk to them. Instead, because if you start yelling, you're going to turn them off. Right? That's Just exactly right, right. Yeah, I agree. Um, you know, uh, people um, approach people different. Everybody has a different outlook and a different perspective on, on things. But uh, I know what you're doing with Brian, and, and he seems very re receptive to that. And that's, and you was. Uh, so many people, they just bull up and won't listen to you. And uh, if you're not calm to start with or, or have a, a good mindset, you're just wasting your time because the more you talk and the louder you get, the louder they're going to get. And the next thing you know, you're at a pissing contest and nobody's going to win. Right. Well, Brian, what a, you know, we've been just, we've been talking for quite a while too. And, uh, um, I mean, do you think I've been, Pretty well fair and level-headed and... Oh, God, yeah. Um, you're really getting me into this, and I realize now what's going on, and just I'm ready to, ready to go here in a couple more. For uh, those of you who didn't know, uh, Brian used to be a pay laker, and uh, I never did yell at him, never did cuss him, never did uh, talk down to him, never did dumb him down. Or anything like that. And I think uh, I think that's the best way to approach people. And uh, uh, boo -boo. you know that's that's about what I've got. Um, let's get off the the track here and just talk about fishing. Gentlemen, me and Lyle was talking about the river. 
Um, the river uh, is pretty well ice jammed up, and uh, the lake that I fish is a solid sheet of ice. Haven't seen that since the 70s. And uh, what do you think, Cloud? You think we're going to have a, a, a flooding spring, or what do you think is going to go on? Well, I don't know. I'm hoping that uh, we get some warm weather and, and uh, get some of this ice out there. I think everybody, you know, I see them talking online. I know a lot of guys are going down south and catching bait and, and going to Wheeler and catching some nice fish. And uh, We've got fish here. It's just that it's not safe enough to be out on that water. And uh, If we get you know, a week of 40s and 50 degree weather, I think you'll see some boats out on the rivers. I'm, the lakes will take a little longer. They don't have the current and things in them to, to push it on through. But uh, it's it you know 15 below we had the other day is just unbelievable. We haven't had that in 25 years, so it's going to take a few days to get rid of it. What's things look like down on the Ohio for you, Brian? Uh, it's actually pretty good. I mean, the water is up now, but muddy right now because the rain last night and a couple little yeah. ice. A little ice fighting down the river. Oh, you got a little ice coming down? Yeah. I don't know when I'm going to be able to get out but get out again, but... Um, you know, we've been trying this video stuff over doing blogs, and I think this is, this is going to be a, a better medium once we... Once we get figured out and, and get a little better at it, the videos are going to be a little bit better. Um, try to bring in more guests to, to talk different topics, uh, maybe a few of the guides. Um, I know Lyle said that he thought he might be able to get uh, some of the conservation guys in here, and that will probably do, do good as well. Yeah, I've actually visited with the... Uh new head of fisheries department for the state of Missouri and uh, him and I are going to go out and, and uh, probably get in a boat and do some fishing and, and discuss catfish conservation and, and uh, talk about the fisheries and and um, now that we've got the uh, new regulations passed to like the Ozarks and Truman uh, I know that they're doing study on the Mississippi River from the Iowa line to St. Louis and from the Missouri line uh, on the west of the Missouri River all the way to St. Louis. So, um, you know, I'm quite sure that he'd be happy to get on here with us if, you know, if, if we can pick a time when he's not covered up. I met him in Jeff City at one of the conservation meetings over He's a really nice guy, uh, not that Chris Vitello wasn't, but this guy really uh, is, is outgoing and he's got the outlook that, you know, if, if we can... Uh, justify making some changes on the rivers, and that's what they want to do. And uh, he's he's the kind of guy we need we need in there. And Chris done a good job, but this guy is is uh, very receptive to to what we're trying to get done. You know, I wonder. You know, you're talking about the 34 inch rule. I wonder because we we talked about this before about the state of Illinois, <coughs> and I wonder if because the the commercial fishermen over here are going over to the Missouri ramps, and if the Missouri, if the state of Missouri would make it illegal to take any more than two 34 inch fish across state lines, you you kind of get where I'm talking about. Well, here's the deal with the 34 inch rule from the way I look at it. Um, it, the way they pass that rule on Truman and Lake of the Ozarks is you are allowed two fish per day per person over 34 inch. Um, the, the 8 to 16 pound fish, is whatever the length is, I don't have it in front of me now, but that's the slot one. But you can't take any of those. That gives them a chance to grow and get to the productive breeding size, which is over 34 inch. So... Um, if they pass that law, it's not um, cost effective for commercial guys to come over here and spend the time and set their nets and everything just for catfish. Now, rough, rough fish is carp and things like that. They'd still be all right with. But um, they can't come over here. and If they're only allowed two per day over 34 inch, that's not going to be cost effective for them to do. So the, the law itself 
will actually take care of uh, people just going out there, and especially the pay like guys, because they're coming in here, they're, they're not looking for fish under 34 inch. You know, when they come to Missouri or Illinois and jump in the Mississippi River, they're looking for giant fish, and they're going to take every one they can get out. So know, if we can... But, but what I'm trying to say is, is if Illinois falls behind and doesn't um, make a 34 inch rule, wouldn't it be easier for Missouri to say, well, um, you can't take uh, a fish over 30 or two fish over 34 inches per day across state lines. So that would keep our Illinois, the Illinois commercial fishermen from coming over there, grabbing what fish they can, and then coming off the boat ramp and then coming back across to Illinois. If the you make it, it illegal is, for them to come back across, then maybe that that will um, help solve Illinois' problem. The way it is right now, uh, it doesn't matter which which uh, license you have, Missouri or Illinois. If you're breaking the law, you're, it doesn't either the conservation department can check you. So what they would do if this law would pass would be. Uh, set at the boat ramp to make them come in, and it wouldn't matter if they're Illinois resident or not. If they had over two fish or 34 inch, not only would they not be able to take it out of state line, they would confiscate them, take them away from them, and they wouldn't get them. So they, they'd never be able to cross the state line. There's such a, a vast span of area on the Illinois side that you can't boat. There's no boat ramps to put in on the on the Illinois side of the Mississippi River. So that's why they cross over. And come to Missouri because we have a lot more ramps that are accessible. Uh, but if you can only take two out of 34 uh, over 34 inches, once you put that boat on the trailer, you're already in, in you're already breaking the law. And it well, wouldn't matter if you. Oh, they, them guys. Well, it, like I say, <laughs> they're going to go after Asian carp and 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 uh, common carp and and the rough fish and stuff like that because uh, to make that rule work. To where it really, really does what it needs to do, they have to make the fines match the crime. If if you get caught with three fish over 34 inches, or four, or a dozen, uh, then it have the fine would have to be so much per ounce for every ounce of the fish over 34 inch. I know years ago uh, I knew a guy that got caught with frogs, and it was. Uh, he had too many of them out of season in a freezer, and somebody turned him in, and it was $25 a leg for every leg over the legal limit of how many he was able to catch. We'd like to ruin him. And, you know, they, they do that with turkeys. If you get caught with an illegal turkeys, it's so much per ounce of whatever that bird weighs. So that's what they'd have to do with the fish. And if you get caught with 100 pounds of fish over the two over 34 inch, and your fine is twenty five dollars an ounce. That'll add up pretty quick, and that'll put an end to all of that stuff. Right. Oh, um, I'm just kind of curious on, on a lot of different stuff, but um, what do you think over there, Brian? I think they're doing the same thing around here. I mean, I'm not really shorter about it. I mean, a lot of people in Kentucky is re really getting mad about this, too. And... Kentucky is actually one of the worst places. Kentucky and, and Indiana, uh, anything on the Ohio River, because there, there's no restrictions hardly at all the way I understand it over there. I know uh, uh, Aaron Wheatley and, and some of them guys in Indiana, Ohio, are really working hard to get stuff done, and, and uh, they're just killing that Ohio River. Yeah, I think where I live, I don't think it's, I don't think they're allowed to do it up in Big Sandy in Kentucky, and they're allowed to, but not up where I live. I don't Are you right in Kentucky, Brian? No. No. No, uh, it's over. I'm on the borderlines, like 20 minutes from Kentucky, five seconds from Ohio. You know, we we I, you know I mentioned this before. Well, last year Cindy and I went down and we fished the monsters of the Ohio. It was a great fishing tournament. We had a wonderful time. Met some of the greatest people you ever want to meet. But yeah. I've fished that river before, and the stretch of water that's down uh, in that part of the country. I've fished it a few times, and 
and uh, there's not that you can't catch blue cats down there, uh, but you just can't catch any size. They keep they keep the over harvest thing going so bad down there yeah. that you to find anything over 15, 20 pounds, you really got to work at it to put any kind of quality fish in a boat. And for a tournament fisherman, uh, that's that's pretty rough sledding, you know when. When you're having the size tournaments they've been having down there, and uh, you know you get three or four good fish, where you go uh, to some of these places like they're catching them down at Wheeler right now. My God, they're catching four, five, sixty, seventy pounders a day. Yeah. And and we can have that everywhere. You know, there's no reason we can't. Oh yeah. I think we got shotheads and then blues. I got no, some. Go ahead. I said, I think we got shovelheads and then blues. I mean, I'm not really out there yet, you know, but I caught my first big blue. It was 41 pound blue on a piece of hot dog. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, That's about 15, 15 minutes already. Good. You know, I can't believe it's already 15 minutes. But, uh, so I was going to ask, oh, yeah, uh, Lyle, do you, do you, have you heard anything else about that, uh, Asian carp plant, plant they plan on putting over there in, uh, um, Alton? No, th that was a big topic for quite a while, and it's kind of dropped off. I know they was planning on doing one there and one somewhere else, and Chicago. everybody was, yeah, everybody was all excited about getting that done. They're uh, trying to do it before they get up into the Great Lakes there before yeah, the, yeah. Uh, the electric I fences. Already, I think they already missed the boat on that from what I'm hearing. But, uh, you know, it's not going to be a great deal of money per pound for those guys, but we need to get rid of some of them. There, there's just so much overpopulation of them things, and uh, that would sure be not making any money at all. Not not only not only for, for uh, food purposes, but, you know, uh, you could bring in just boatloads and boatloads of them things and, and uh, make fertilizer out of it, food, processed food out of it. I mean, there's a lot of things that could really be done that'd be cheap. Absolutely. I, I know at one time the Missouri University was in Columbia was looking at um, uh, for making dog food out of them, but, but you know, that just wasn't cost effective for the university to do it, is what I understood. But, you know, anything that you can utilize to make people want to get out and get them things out of there, uh, we're never going to get rid of all of them, but, man, we need to thin them down a little bit. They're dangerous. I tell you what, they knock your ass out <laughs> you <float down> the <laughs> river. Give it a little throttle you. and bam. They will hurt you. Well, I think we're going to close this one, this one out for today, and we'll catch you next week. I'm not sure... Uh, who will have have to uh, question, but we'll figure out something, I guess. So, uh, other than that, take care, and if you ain't fishing, you ain't living. <laughs>